Welcome to Hoodoo TV. We are going live talking about new comic books for September 19th. Um, let's get this rocking. My name is Hoosier, and I want to thank everybody for jumping on for Hoodoo TV. Um, and I got a friend on the other line. Who's there? The Bald Moose. Thanks for joining us, guys. Awesome, guys. So appreciate you making it. If you're new to this channel, um, we do videos like this uh, once a week where we're talking new comic books, news, um, and we want to hear what you guys got to say in the chat. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit like, and then we can get you back on this to uh, to hang out with us, be part of this community that we got here. Um, but yeah, that's what we're here for. So there's a chat live. Put it in there. We'll answer questions as we go. Thanks for jumping on, everyone. What has been up, Moose? Man. Lots of work since the last time that you and I talked to going to Rose City. Man, I just swarmed at work. I, I get back to work, right? Because we both agree that we both take that Monday off after a con. Um, I get back there Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, I'm shoved off to training. So I'm, I'm behind basically a week. I show up Friday. Pipes are burst. So they're kicking us out of the building. This whole week has just been nothing but catch up. But I did manage this weekend to get some reading in. So I'm all set. You said ketchup. Why does everything have to go back to food with you? <laughs> I'm a fat man. <laughs> so, but yeah, dude, uh, work sucks. Nobody here uh, wants to come and hear that. <laughs> but uh, we're all busy people, man. So sorry to hear that. The pipes and everything at work. But, dude, I don't know if you saw this this week. And I got to show this. Dude, I mm -hmm. am so pumped up. For this, Joaquin Phoenix looks awesome as the Joker. Um, Amusement Mile, that's a tie-in with um, the um, – oh, God. Um, wow, man, I'm so brain farting right now, and I know what I'm talking about. Um, but one of the greatest uh, Joker stories ever. It looks freaking cool. I, I like the way he looks, man, so I'm all in for it. So, Yeah, I saw, I saw that Joaquin Phoenix, uh, just him in, in the drab clothes. I thought, meh, okay. And then I saw the Joker get up. And I was like, all right, let's 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 see what this guy has. I mean, he's got some shoes to fill. Excuse me. He's got some serious shoes to fill. Um, but somebody like Joaquin Phoenix, I think he can do it. I'm hoping he can do it because, yeah, much like you, man, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm looking forward to a little Joker story. Yeah, and that tie-in with the miracle, mi the amusement mile is from the Killing Joke, which was a great, great story. Uh, I love the name that they're giving him in this. It is Arthur Fleck, Affleck, A Fleck. <laughs> uh, I wonder what the tie-in there, but he just, yeah, the top left corner. I mean, he looks a little bit of a. Uh, um, What's the movie that came out where the guy went around with the cattle prod and he was killing everybody with the, uh, oh, man. It was a huge horror movie. Um, but that's who he, he looks just like the guy from that movie. If you're on the line, let us know what yeah. movie I'm thinking. Of. I know you guys. Um, but, yeah, he, he looks freaking awesome. So Yeah, that, that Joker getup, he looks good. He looks real good. Um. I think they, you know, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to, he looks a little clean, maybe because the last Joker looks so gritty and dirty. Um, and I'm not talking about Suicide Squad Joker. Uh, but I still think he looks good. And if there's a guy that's got the chops that can do it, I think he can do it. And I'm, I'm brain fighting. Uh, no Country for Old Men. He looks just like oh. No Country for Old Men right there. Um, and then we just, yeah, he. I think he's going to do it. Um, do I think he's going to get anywhere near uh, what Heath Ledger did? No, but I'm going to go out and say that he's the the second best Joker we've had. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to go out and say he beats he beats Jack. Of course, he beats Jared. Um, he might even you know come close to Mark Hamill's voice on the animated series. So if he if he practiced, if he could get that Joker laugh down from mark hamill that would immediately push him way up yep but uh yeah for you guys live on the chat who do you guys put down as your um top jokers in uh cinematic or animated um or movies right like uh you know you still got uh garcia from the 66 um so there's quite a bit of them so i'm interested to see what you guys put on there as your potential jokers that are coming 
Um, another new thing that came out today that I want to definitely put our eyeballs on is some pages of Livewire. And Raul Allen, Patricia Martin, do not disappoint. Um, simply amazing. Simply amazing. So um, I was joking with Patricia Martin saying that these need to be put in the seat back pockets of airplanes because <laughs> some of it looks like uh, entertaining, especially that top right corner uh, with the guys uh, getting his coffee there. Uh -huh. um, make sure your kids stay in their seat. So, right. dude, that looks like simply an amazing uh, looking uh, a book so far. Yeah, that looks that looks like a lot of fun. Um, and you're right, the art just it just dances off the page, and I'm pretty certain Vita is going to be able to do a good job, a really good job. It's going to they're going to turn that book into something. I think the Valiant fans are going to be able to hold on to. Definitely, I, I have a good feeling about it. At least that's I'll leave it at that. I have a good feeling about it all. Yeah, I like uh, seeing that. Uh, it was Patricia Martin and Vita. They were both chatting. And they were talking about how they haven't met each other, and they're looking forward to meeting each other. And just how like uh, how Vita cried when uh, when when Vita saw the pages that came in, that she was oh, just really? so impressed with them, that uh, that she's getting to work with such a great creative team, and she should, uh, t yeah, definitely hold that in high standards. That she's being with some awesome comic artists there. I know there's I know that that a lot of Valiant fans have been pretty pumped about this, and. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna just love this book. Yep, I I, I completely agree. We're also got some pages. Uh, we saw them when we were at Rose City Comic Con, but these came out public today, and that is the pages of Bloodshot Rising Spirit number one, um, written by a new writer too. What do you think of uh, Kevin Grievous jumping on? You know, I'm curious. I, I don't know what was going on there. I don't know what uh, what Lonnie and Zach were doing. Uh, probably some other project came up. Something had to happen, and they had an outline set up, and I think Kevin's just going to fill it in. Um, today we also saw the release of December's uh, – um, oh, goodness. Now I'm having the brain fart. Basically the projections for December for all the – Solicitations. And, and Lonnie and Zach, neither one of them are on there. And it's all Kevin. So interesting, um, curious. Uh, I, you know, I'm still going to read it. I'm still going to. I'm still very excited to get it. But eight books, in and out. Get a good story. Knock it out of the park. Yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes from there too. That is interesting. That yeah, Bloodshot Rising Spirit number two has it that it's written by Kevin Grievous. Um, and then, yeah, you don't have any mention of Lonnie or Zach on there at all, no. um, which is quite entertaining. I mean, I, they say that Ken, Lashley, uh, Kevin, and uh, Joe have all worked together prior. Joe Illich, the editor over at Valiant. Um, so it's an interesting combination of what what is happening. Uh, Kevin has written some great stuff. Like, he is the creator of Underworld which is really kind of a cool uh, cool concept. And then also having done I, Frankenstein is another uh, thing that he has created. Um, he only wrote the first um, Underworld. The rest were written by someone else. So he wrote the original story, and he uh, connected all the characters. Um, yeah, and he's, you know, they say he's done a couple other things. He's done New Warriors is another title that he's done, you know. I uh, I'm curious on what what it is if it is outlined by Zach and Lonnie and then uh, why just on book two that they're already not getting credit. Yeah, that's bizarre. Truly, truly bizarre. Yeah, who knows? What are you guys' thoughts online about that change? Uh, la kind of it seems like last minute, right before the solicitations, it's showing it. Yeah. So it's kind of last minute. So. Um, another thing that came out, Valiant had quite a bit of news this weekend. We did. And this we did good news. This one excites me. The gosh. new Exo Deluxe. My gosh, this is going to come out on um, local comic book shop day, November yep. 4th, I believe, November 4th. Uh, take a look at that variant or that, uh, that cover there that is just all awesome. The, uh, the Virgin cover. So mm -hmm. good looking. Just like the, uh, which one was that? The Comics Pro or the uh, Humble Bumble Humble Bundle? Yes, that had yes, the variant the with unsigned. Great looking book. 
in all of those covers, it's the most sought after. The Humble Bundle, uh, La Rosa signed, or there's a couple that are out there that have no signature at all. Yep, those are good looking books. I love it. It's so Star Wars, Phil. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely an homage to Star Wars, or at least it has to be. But beyond that, the background, just the art and everything on that cover is just so sexy. It's just I've been I've been in love with that ever since the first time I think that we've seen it. Um, I've got many renditions of it. You can see uh, behind. Well, maybe not. I got a little bit of glare there. You can see behind you as well. You got that cover on the gold. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've just loved that from the moment that we've seen it. It's awesome. And then I want to pull up one other thing. This is something I didn't expect to be the case. So we're going from that, and I'm going to try to fill my screen here with this, guys. Um, I can't get an image pulled up. But Ninjak number 14, The Solicits, is written as final issue. England's top spy has gone rogue. Um, sad, 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 sad. I like that little twist because we'll get Livewire going a little bit. And the little bit of a teaser that they left you is that Ninjak has to choose between his life working for MI6 or the woman that he loves. Fantastic. It, it, it you know, and it gets it going in a direction where he disappears. We don't know what's going on, you know. He's going to be completely undercover, no money, no backing. He's got no fortune left. So it's just going to be him and his abilities, I guess you could say. So while I know I'm going to miss Christos Gage, fantastic series this man has given us. I mean, outstanding. And I totally get it. He said in a tweet in a conversation with some other people uh, earlier today that the, the TV stuff that he's doing is just – it's bearing down on him too much, taking too much time. Um and he doesn't want to cheat anybody out of out of good stories. He wants to come back eventually and work for Valiant. But, uh, man, Christos Gage, th this, even though it's just 14 issues, has given us a fantastic story. Yeah, it has been great. And it's sad for a lot of people because that has been the highlight of what a lot of people have had. Um, I know that's been my highlight of Valiant recently has been that and Shadow Man. Um, as of late. So yeah, it is kind of, to me, it's kind of sad to see that taken off the shelf. Um, and where, what, what are we going to see next? We know we're getting a bunch of new books yeah. uh, from what we talked about, a new one every month uh, for the next, you know, all of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, we heard talks of a faith ongoing later, Rye in May. Rye in May. Uh, Eternal Warriors coming back with uh, Incursion. So hopefully we get to see an ongoing of Eternal Warrior. Hopefully we get the uh, Archer and Armstrong back. I really, really am oh, missing those guys on the shelf. Absolutely. Um, and we need to get somebody on Harbinger. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It just needs need something. 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 Type of, type of Whatever, they Whatever they are, they're, they're, they're at Hawaii or what have you, um, or wherever they're hidden. It needs to be something. It needs to be, you know, something strong. Even if it's new Harbingers, you want to call it the new Harbingers. I, I don't particularly care. Give us some Harbinger-like characters. Get them going in an adventure. Um, it's time to bring something back. It, it doesn't have to be the Harbinger Renegades. It can be a whole different brand. I don't care. But Harbinger kids need to be in the fold. It needs to be Harbinger. <laughs> I'm going to be a little more picky than that. It needs to be Harbinger. You need to have Pete because he's been a lot of the, the universe is based around him being one of the Omega level Psyots. We need to have Harada back in their combination with those guys. Um, it, it's a core piece and in its right place is a tentpole to Valiant in my honest opinion. And I think we need to have the Renegades together. And I think there needs to be something because a team book like that has been shown in comics to continue to work. Um, and I think that we all need it, whether it's, you know, because you look at those guys and they are a mix of the Fantastic Four with the um, X-Men. Like they got they got it all and it's continued to work. Um, their unique story that matches, Mishes matches all of those. Um, yeah, I want it. So. So yeah, and Jace Falter actually goes on there and retweets us. They or says that retweets us, talks to us on here, chats with us that Ninja K number fourteen is the biggest bummer in the end, and I agree. Um, but yeah, I, I I want there's gonna be a lot more, which is exciting. 
they're in a lot work, a lot of works. Uh, those who have uh, been on the line, showed us, talked to us a little bit, may know that one of my favorite characters outside of the Valiant Universe is Martian Manhunter, John Jones, and he is coming back in December, and I am excited. He's getting back to his roots, being a detective, uh, coming back to what he originally was, and so. This excites me. Uh, we have Steve Orlando on it, who's done a lot of DC titles. Um, he's done, you know, anywhere from Batman to um, one of his creator owns. It's been really great. That people have enjoyed his Crude. Uh, Crude's been pretty big. Um, been tied in with Dark Said. He's done, yeah, pieces of a lot of different books. I want to see where he's coming from. We were at the. Uh, Emmett, the Rose City Comic Con, and one of the guys at the DC booth was, we were talking about this coming out soon. And uh, he says it's going to be awesome. He um, says it's a, a title that a lot of people are excited to have, and I've been asking for it for a while. Um, I know you have, man. You're, you were all about asking questions and, hey, when are we going to get them back, all that stuff. So I know you're pumped. As soon as I saw that information on Twitter and that you had retweeted it, yeah, I, I knew you were doing a little dance. I knew you were happy, man. Well, I'm just happy that they told me about it a couple weeks before at Rose City, knowing about it. So I was excited. I was looking. I was waiting for it every day. When are we going to get more news on this? When are we going to get more news? You know, deep down, my uh, biggest wish was having Jeff Lemire be writing it, which I think would be pretty freaking awesome. Um, but, yeah, then I was then I was like Christos Gage. <laughs> <laughs> Not on Nin Nin Ninja K. He might as well be doing that. But uh, only be so lucky and only ask for so much, right? Right. Um, any, got any other news? That's a lot. Uh, Danny Kazim. Kazim. Oh, former Valiant editor. Went to Marvel, yeah. yeah went to my, that's small news. Um, but still, we wish him all the best luck moving up. That's outstanding. Yeah. I think he left Valiant quite a long time ago, though. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, still landing. Yeah. Marvel, that's, I think, the big two. That's, that's, yeah. Top of the heat. Yep, yep, that's it. And uh, let's get into the next piece that we I like to call Trade Weight No More. And let's talk about some trades that are coming out. The first one I want to put on Mike is Coda by Boom Studios with Simon Spur Spurrier. Um, this is a cool fantasy tell. Um, they, I mean, you just hear these two mix this mix up, and they could do it a lot. But Mad Max meets Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm sold. Take my money. Um, and Cy Spurrier is awesome. He's done a lot, a lot of books. Um, Moose, I know you got this one on yours, so go ahead and talk about this book here. Yeah, Ninjak in the Valiant Universe. I loved, loved, loved the uh, episodes there from Bat in the Sun. Um, they were a lot of fun. Our first little glimpse. The book followed suit and was a fun read. Added a little bit here and there. Um, for those that had aren't familiar with either one of them, haven't uh, watched any Bat in the Sun, or haven't read the comics, this is a fantastic pickup. Fun little thing, um, and then you can go watch the uh, the episodes and uh, put it all together. Lots of fun. I have uh, not read it yet. I did not want to read it as coming out because I didn't want it to spoil the show for me. Okay. Um, so I'm interested to see how, how it compared. I need to get in there. Uh, I do like that they gave Aaron Shonky credit on it too. Uh, he is the, uh, the main guy behind Bat in the Sun, uh, him and his dad, Sean. So that's cool that they did that. Um, but yeah, I, if you haven't watched the series, watch the series. We had some reaction videos of us. We have some videos with some of the, uh, some of the cast. Um, we got to meet, uh, the guy Armstrong. We got to meet, um, Roku, um, awesome Chantel Berry. Uh, Kevin Porter, um, and then we were on that over at Get Valiant with the creator, um, Aaron and Sean, and then Livewire herself, Sierra Foster. So cool videos to go take a look at and kind of find those. Um, it was fun doing that. Cool videos, cool cool, cool things set up to watch that. Um, then we're going to get into some of our number ones out this week. One of the number ones we got on here is by Aftershock. Aftershock has been putting out some pretty darn good books. This one is Patience, Conviction, Revenge. Um, new series. So, yeah, all the way around. Um, it's about a crime syndicate that rules Las Vegas. Um, I'm a sucker for stories that happen in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I've been there so much as a kid growing up. And then um, 
I, I, I dig it. I wonder where this could go. Aftershock puts out, like I said, great books. Um, this one is written by Patrick uh, Kinlan. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing there, or we can never go home. So those are some big titles that did really well. I believe uh, an Eisner Award or a nomination in one of those. So, um, and much like you, I am a sucker for crime syndicate. Anything uh, Yakuza or you know something law breaking, something like that. Um, I like that. And that cover right there, and just looking at some of the things, um, kind of remind me a little bit of Die Die Die. So it could be uh, something similar. Oh, now see, you're talking a little bit my language. I am pumped up for this black label. The Batman Damned Number One. Super stoked. And that image there on the right hand side, I mean, you've got the Joker smile and the Batman outfit. Um, and basically, the whole gist of this thing is that Joker is dead. Really, really dead. Batman killed him. These are facts. But Batman doesn't remember. And the further he digs, the more crazy he goes. So I'm super excited. This whole black label is supposed to be dark and gritty and just crazy. A little more adult, I guess. And that's right up my alley. That is just fantastic. I, first time I saw that image, I was just like, oh, I have got to read this book. Dude, I am so pumped up for DC Black Label. Um, it does a really cool concept to where it's not in canon. So you're allowed to kind of get these characters and just take them to a place that you don't have to worry about where you end them up at because it's not canon. Um, so I love that concept of it because it's just that story. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the killing joke, great story. Um, one of the, the books that was supposed to come out last month is coming out in November and that is Superman Year One, and that's Frank Miller and John Romita Jr., which is going to be great. I mean, Frank Miller, what he did with the Dark Knight back in the day, oh, God. Um, and then there's some other things that are coming set up. The Other History of the DC Universe by John Ridley. Um, and then there's the Wonder Woman uh, Historia, the Amazons, uh, and that's by Kelly Sue uh, Dominic. And uh, one that I'm, I'm pretty pumped up is Greg Rucka, is having uh, Diana's daughter. Um, Greg Rucka did a lot of, I uh, believe, Wonder Woman. He did, killed a lot of Wonder Woman. Now he's doing Diana's daughter. Um, and then I guess the one I'm outside of this one, uh, Batman Damned, is going to be Batman Last Night on Earth with Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Um, that creative team on that, um, yeah, score me one. Give me front row tickets. Um, I love this black label. Um, I think it's a great concept. I think a lot of uh, publishers should, should look into that. Now, are all those that you just mentioned all black label? All those are going to be the black labels. Those are the announced black label books. Nice. But so, no, but the, the last number one that you just mentioned, that's coming out this week as well, correct? Um, I don't think that one's coming out this I week. I just know that there was another Batman, but I didn't pay attention to it very much because I was so stoked about the black, about Damned. Um, yeah, it's it's on scheduled yet, so that hasn't been announced yet on the uh, black label. Yeah, uh, on the uh, the, the yeah. last night. Dan is going to be getting my money, um, and there's going to be a lot of uh, black labels that'll be getting my money. I think uh, I think they're going to reap the benefits of it. I really, really do. They're gonna they're gonna be putting out some fan freaking tastic stuff. This is a book that I'm calling out because I want to give it some uh, just. Some fan service, man. I love Dick Tracy growing up. There, uh, the comic strips that it did was awesome. And then the uh, the movie that came out back in the day in the '90s, I believe, maybe it was late '80s, um, was was great. And I, uh, I'm gonna score. And IDW has Dick Tracy number one. Um, this is just a four part series. It's called Dead or Alive. And um, you know, if you're into that old Dick Tracy, just that that concept of where it was. Um, but it's kind of reimagined in the 21st century. So they're kind of changing it so it's not so old world that it moves more into the new world. So um, so score one for Dick Tracy. Um, let's see what else I got here. I do have a couple other ones in here. This one sounds like a cool concept. This one is a image title, and it is called um, Burnouts. Burnouts number one. Um, <laughs> the just behind a this is just absolutely 
hilarious, something that you can't take too seriously. Uh, basically, alien invasion, but you can't see them. Um, only these kids that you see there can see them, but they have to be completely wasted in order to see them. So, <laughs> I mean, and I do believe their high school kids are just out of high school. I'm not, I'm not quite certain the age group that it is, but it looks raunchy. It looks funny. Um, not something to be taken overly serious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of different when you look at the two, two, the two covers on the right, make it seem a little bit more adult, but that one on the left just reminds me of more child, young, young, young adult, uh, read. Uh, I hope it does go a little darker. I mean, maybe the fact that they have to be wasted makes it that way. So yeah, that sounds like a cool concept. Uh, one, one that I know a lot of people are excited for is the man who killed our old buddy Logan is the guy who gets to bring him back. The return of Wolverine is happening. Uh, Charles soul is on this title and we have spent too long without having a, um, a Wolverine in Canon. Um, and he's back, um, and a lot, ton of covers again, Marvel, another one coming out. So let's cover it with a bunch of covers, but, uh, some of them are pretty cool because they do a lot of the different iterations of, uh, Wolverine in this. So, I think that's kind of a cool throwback to catch the, uh, the homage, the history of Wolverine. And I think they spent 32 issues searching for him, you know, in various different uh, groups as they're searching for him, hunt, trying to hunt him down, trying to get him, and now they got him. But, yeah, they spent 32 issues, a good portion of the last couple of months, trying to track him down and figure out where he's at. Now, Now they've got him. Score there, and what looks like we are having a little internet slowing down. Sorry about that, guys. Um, here's a goal title that I know Chris had and that uh, all of us like, Matt Kent, with his Black Badge number two. Yeah, this is uh, Black Badge. Uh, what is it? They're Boy Scouts. That's right. Boy Scouts are some type of, of scouts troop, um, but yet they're frontline assassins for the U.S. government. So, fun. Yeah, they're they're basically what happens after an Eagle Scout when you uh, when you have all your badges and you've made everything. Um, what's 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 the next step for you and where to take it? So they're the black op they're the black ops uh, SEAL team Eagle Scouts. So <laughs> score score on that for those guys. Um, and then uh, one that I'll definitely pull out in this corner here, um, little Lemire Tuck call out because we love Lemire. Yeah, Hit Girl, the last issue of Canada, and then one that Dinesh has said is the uh, the, probably the best book out in comics, and that is Black Hammer. Yeah, so. and there's been a lot of hype and a lot of talk about Lemire um, when he gets done with Valiant, going back and working specifically on Black Hammer and making that an entire um, universe, I guess you could say. It's been tied in. They've gotten quite a bit on it. Oops. And uh, with uh, Dr. Frankenstein, I believe it what it was, and then just where it's going. So, yeah, quite a bit is coming out with it already with uh, multiple different iterations. Um, I think both of us enjoyed the first issue of this one. Pearl number two cool. is coming out this week, um, and it is, is great. I mean, this is Michael Gatos and uh, Brian Michael Bendez, uh, I believe David Mack on covers again. Yeah, and we got a great chance. Well, I did. I got a great chance to at least meet the man, uh, talk to him, chat him up just a little bit. Uh, man's a signing fool. He he didn't turn anybody away. He just and he sat there and just whipped out signature after signature after signature. Um, but I will say, I truly, truly enjoyed Pearl One. I'm excited to get Pearl Two. I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, and it's one of those things I know that over time I'm going to be jumping into the other three that uh, he has that he's worked with other various artists. One of the titles that I love right now is Death or Glory. Um, this is a Rick Morender, which I like most things Rick Morender's coming out with. Um, and this one is can continue to be awesome. It's about Glory, who's trying to save her dad's life. They're off the grid family, and they don't possess like any insurance. So she's trying to take matters into her own hand and hijack things and it's just things are turning out to be bigger and bigger everywhere she turns um and uh a unique story um i uh i like i say i love what marinder's doing he's got some cool concepts and um you know he's 
yeah, his deadly class is coming soon. Punch that in there. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I really am. Boom. Getting into some valiant things. You know, this Britannia Lost Eagles of Rome, um, this series has been entertaining. Uh, we haven't had the twists and turns, but I think we're, we're seeing our main uh, characters really, they're really starting to show their wares of being a detectioner. And uh, while you're bringing along, uh, oh goodness, now what's her name? Oh, um, oh gosh, yes. But she's the one that asked the question. She she doesn't quite understand what he's doing. Achilia. Yeah, thank you, Achilia. Um, Achilia doesn't quite understand what's going on and why they're heading where they're heading. Um, but he's just fact. This is where we're going because this is where it's going to be. Uh, so three should really, if it's anything like the last two, book three is going to really kick up the pace. And you're gonna, we're going to see some gory. We're going to see some fun. Uh, maybe even a couple of twists and turns. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This will probably be the first book that I read tomorrow. Dig it. Yeah, I've loved all of Britannia since it came out. Um, I'm still interested to see the tie-in to the Valiant Universe. Oh, uh, well, here's one I know you're excited for. Uh, some Quantum and Woody, Elliot Rahal on the title. Um, it is two more till the end. Yeah, I'm bummed about the end. Um, but and a, but there's been talk about a Unity-style book and bringing them into the fold. I'm fine. You know, just I'd like to keep the same art, the same author, honestly. I want, you know, I want that touch of funny but yet deep heartfelt feel to it. Um, I've enjoyed this run and I know we're getting that monster in the far right corner there uh, of, of the books, the covers that we see. I know that's going to be the big fight. Uh, we should probably start to see some of that. Uh, and, and that's going to be, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. There's still a couple of unanswered questions so far in the books. Uh, and I hope we get to them. We've only got a couple left, really hoping we get to them. Uh, one of the books that I'm probably the most excited for here, Shadow Man, continues to impress. Andy Diggle's doing a great job. Um, this is kind of this is going on the dead and gone uh, segment of it. And, you know, what it is is he's trapped in 4000 BC, so he's got to do everything. He's got to uh, keep going where he's, where you know, um, if he doesn't get to where he needs to be, he could be trapped there forever. Um, I just love the way they're bringing out the uh, Shadow Man mythos. Um, how they went through the history and kind of saw where this the Shadow Man kind of started. Uh, how they went to uh, Brooklyn and then just the keep tying in to the history of Shadow Man. Um, and this is bringing out back to West Africa. So um, and I I dig it. I think Diggle's doing a great job. Uh, and Guedes is on this, Renato Guedes. So you get his uh, painted style, cool pieces of art that he, he's kind of been known for. So uh, all the way with uh, with Shadow Man. So yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I like what Andy has done so far with this book. Has put so much into Shadow Man. You know the the last what did we have before fourteen issues. We've had a couple of different volumes before then. I don't think any of them, even going back to VH one, has done as much for the character character as Andy has done in the set that he has, that he currently um, has been working on. The the mythos that you mentioned, the, the everything, it, it's just laid the groundwork. Now, he, he before he almost didn't seem real, it was almost too much of uh, you know, not quite. Now it's a definitive yes, absolutely. Here's the foundation, gonna build a great monument to Shadow Man. And he's already said he's got when he started this thing, he says he's got two years worth of information. I hope it gets that far. I really do. Yeah, I, I know the previous run, I think it went all the way to 16 before it started going into Peter Milligan's run, uh, which tied the end times and things like that. So um, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's gotten to the, the 92 set yet, of, or where Shadow Man originated, but it's getting there. It's getting there. It's early. Still really early. We're seven, yeah. you know, we just hit six months of this 
uh, comic. So it's early, but it looks projecting as though you, I can agree with that statement at the projection that we're getting. Um, just don't want to jump the gun too quick, but it looks like it, like it does. I love what he's doing. Um, we're getting a lot more understanding of who Jack is now and who the Loa is and who it can out connects. Um, yeah, with my connection, I just wanted to go back. I wanted to go to Haiti because go to the voodoo culture home, man, right where it's at. Yeah. Um, you know, that's where it's at present day, I guess. When we're talking 4,000, it's probably coming back to Africa. So that was a, quite a bit of books today. Yeah, we and we flew through that too. We, flew, we just blazed right through that. One we didn't mention, I wanted to at least get it out there because some people like to see the framework of everything, but Gideon Falls number one director's cut. That's oh, a that's right. Thing there. Um, Gideon Falls right now is massive. It's huge. Uh, of course, there's all kinds of talk about it, but the story, the story is fantastic. I think we all know that. But uh, yeah, getting the director's cut, those are fun. I've, I've gotten a couple in the past and I enjoy them. I, I probably will get this one as well. But then I've got, you know, some books from last week that I didn't pick up and then this week's books as well. So we'll see how, how much I have in my wallet. <laughs> uh, that book is pretty awesome. I already got a chance to take a look at it and it's all oh, yeah. black and whites. Um, so it's all the whole series without color. Um, and then you're getting Lemire script, um, which is cool because you get to see his descriptions of the panels and then kind of how Lucy's playing it, letting uh, uh, Sorrentino do his, his deeds on the back end. Um, so it's really cool the way that, that that's kind of played out. So kind of thinking about how they got the scenes and then just looking at the directions in the script. I, I find fascinating when it comes to that because it does show how much an artist, a penciler plays into the story, um, you know, with layout and everything it, and how that tells the story. It's pretty cool the way, way it all comes together. Um, and that book, phenomenal. Um, I can't wait for it to be the TV show that it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm picking up everything that comes out on this book. So um, it's one of mine that I need to get another number one because I'm trying to bind the whole series. But oh, I'm going to yeah. keep the original first print number one uh, aside because I think it's going to be something special because it already is. Oh, yeah. It already is. Mm -hmm. so, so big time, big deals, man. Um the question I had earlier today that I'm going to ask everybody uh, to put in the comments, what is your Joker order? Again, who do you, who do you think is the best? I mean, I think everybody's almost unanimous when it says Heath Ledger was the best Joker. Uh, but from going, going from there, what do you think? Uh, my, like I said, my speculation is Joaquin Phoenix is going to be considered the second best Joker we've seen. Um, I'm not sure he can pass Ledger's, but I'd love to be surprised. I, I would I would I have loved Mark Hamill as the Joker, uh, at least for the voice, um, and that's that's a tough hill right there. I mean, let alone uh, let alone anything else, being able to beat out an iconic voice like Mark Hamill in making of the Joker, um, yeah, I I think it's possible. I think it's possible. He's got the chops for it. Anything is possible if you just put your mind to it. <laughs> Just got to do it. Got to be, got to do it. All right, everybody. I want to thank you guys for jumping on. Um, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you like.